We're starting. Yeah. Welcome to Fresh Off the Show. Hello, everybody. What's up? Uh, we're here uh, for Fresh Off the Show. I'm Phil. And I'm Jenny. This is the uh, unofficial Fresh Off the Boat uh, after show. Yes. Uh, we're doing this. Uh, we got an audience here. Uh, Yell, yeah, yeah, audience. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, you know, we just watched Fresh Off the Boat. Uh, for those who are tuning in for the first time, we did this last week. We decided that, uh, you know, we're very excited about Fresh Off the Boat, and um, we felt like there's a conversation that needs to happen that, that's happening, you know, and we felt like we'd add to that. And uh, we, we created this show very do it yourself style. Yeah, so. We have all the right props. We have yeah. the shrimp chips from last week, but we've added the Kit Kats, the matcha green tea. Green Kit tea. Kat. It's Japanese, but whatever. There was some colonialization. And then, um, <laughs> and then there's some. Um, and then I have a, a, bev a very Chinese beverage. You, you want to guess what it is? That's uh, that's just hot water. It's just hot water. Hot water, the most Chinese of all drinks. Yes, just FYI. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we're totally doing this. Uh, I mentioned this last week. We're doing this like totally do-it-yourself style over Google Hangout. Set up this up. Got friends together. We no one's paying us, but yeah, if you no, want to. Yeah, nobody's paying us to do this, but uh, if you want to, you know, Rose Hill Cemetery. If you're out there <laughs> listening to us. We get it so excited on the West Coast when Rose Hill Cemetery, the, the ad goes on because we know that it's time for Fresh Off the Boat. Yeah. It's, it's, totally, it's, it's a, a local it's ad. A, yeah, it's a running joke now. In LA, it's a it's an, ad, an Asian themed ad for Rose Hill Cemetery. Well, we have to tell whoever doesn't know about it why it's weird, right? Well, it's it's also very, um, there's, it's, there's lots of like, uh, you know, uh, Asian music and uh, uh, animation. It's Beijing opera. Yeah, Beijing it's, opera. It's yes. Beijing opera. There's like hella makeup. Beijing opera with like costume, and it's like, what are you gonna do for your right. curtain what is, call? What is your legacy? You know, and for then, your curtain. For your curtain call. Yes. That's death. That's death. They made death <laughs> anyway. And uh, yeah, so that's uh, you know they're reaching out to the Asian seniors in the area basically. So um so yeah so uh, if you want to uh, contribute to our post show, we're gonna discuss what happened on the show. We already know what we're gonna talk about, but. If you have some stuff you want to suggest, feel free to use the hash fresh off the show. I know if you joined us last week, uh, we used another name, but we kind of went, we thought it through and we we're like, oh, the mojo for the other name wasn't that good. So yeah. we're using fresh off the show. Fresh off the show. That's the better that's mojo. The official title. Yeah. Better mojo. Hashtag so, yeah. fresh off the show. Hashtag fresh off the show. Um, last week was so tough, man. Like I think managing both the hashtag fresh off the show and the YouTube comment chat so apologies it was really hard to keep track um you know like i said we pretty much i mean this is pretty clear what to react to from the show but definitely everyone's input is super super helpful so uh i'll do my best we have our co-producer joanna lee angry plus one on twitter um helping us out and an awesome studio audience I, we have like let me count there's like almost 15 people here. this is our, our audience has grown <laughs> i so, know yeah <laughs> I know. It's very cool. It's very cool. But yeah. uh, why don't we get into the episode? Yeah. Right. So what? Ha first of all, so, what happened? So this episode is called Persistent Romeo. Yeah. And uh, it was a decidedly uh, sex-themed episode. I know. So many uh, awkward feelings. So, man. I, so, so Jenny, I was wondering what you were while we we're watching this. I wonder what you were thinking because you have a, a like a bit in your in your act about <laughs> about Asian parents and sex. And yeah. so you know, it, 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 I think it fits very nicely into the theme of of this show in yes. that like you know. I, I think Asian families kind of have a reputation for not being super forthright about the topic of sex. Yeah. You know. Well, number one, let's just establish that just in general, it's really awkward to talk to your kids about sex or as a kid hearing your parents talk about it. But like, you know, yeah, the bit that you're referring to is the fact that I, to this day, I don't know the Mandarin Chinese word for sex, even though I'm like totally fluent. <laughs> right. So I understood everything that they said in Chinese. That, was, never, on the that show. was not handed down to you. No, the word sex was not handed down to me. So um, I I was really laughing at how um, Father Wang handled the sex talk because yeah. it's like, number one, he established that like in Taiwan, it's very conservative. So like they try not to have premarital sex, which is kind of true, but like, nah, dude, they be having premarital sex. <laughs> Let's be honest. They just don't talk about it because it's like taboo. So they just don't talk about it. They just like front, like they don't do it. But I know, I know hella Taiwanese kids being conceived out of wedlock. <laughs> For sure, I think <laughs> it kind of honest, happens. I think on. it kind of happens worldwide. Yes. Yeah, and like Chinese yeah. people are like one fifth of the world population. Man, people are doing it. They're so, getting it on. Yes. Whatever. So I don't know about what that's about. Yeah. So um, I don't know. What do you want to talk about first in this episode? Oh my God! There's so many awesome moments. Yeah. 
Um, so let's let's first talk about the, uh, the the thing with Eddie. Let's talk with him yes. and, and the and the sex tape. So, Eddie, um, as, as somebody people. who was once a pre adolescent boy, I know the sort of and oh, this that's the other thing about this episode is like this takes place in the nineties. Yeah. So it's not the same as it like now. People might not understand sort of one's access to adult material is you know it's it's way too effortless now yeah. you know back in the day it was it's like, like lord of the rings it's like an epic journey to find yeah, it like, was, it was, it like was, one nudie pick right like <laughs> i mean it was uh you know it's, it was kind of a struggle you know it was like a, a definitely like a a quest if you yes. were to get a peek at something yeah. sort of like you know adult explicit whatever and so it's really funny how it plays out with um you know i i I, I know of many Are you confess I know of many conversations that happened quest? when I was in school of, of promises or rumors of possible dirty movies at birthday parties Phil, or are something. you gonna tell the internet about I have no your own I have no experience I have no personal confessions to make okay <laughs> just saying I mean the, I had but to the, ask. I'm just you know all I'm gonna say is the struggle is real the struggle was real. <laughs> Um, I mean, I remember when I was tiny, accidentally stumbling onto like the Spice Channel. Oh, <laughs> unscrambled? Do you guys remember the Spice Channel? It was like sc back when there was scrambled cable. <laughs> it's awkward. Whatever. Um. <laughs> no one's laughing. Okay. You know what I'm talking about. No one's admitting this. Um, like, <laughs> can we talk about that scene at the at the video store where um, oh. Eddie tells Emery and Evan to um, to make a distraction? <laughs> That, Raisins. that might be my favorite scene in the whole episode, actually. Like, Emery immediately goes to- They used to be grapes. <laughs> they used to be grapes. Raisins. They used to be grapes. I have to just tell you, like, okay, regardless of all any Asian American stereotypes you have and, like, how they're limiting for us, I have to say, it is universally agreed upon that Asian babies are adorable. Yeah. Tiny, it's scientifically proven. Yeah. Tiny East Asian babies <laughs> are just tiny East Asian humans are just so adorable. And Ian and Forrest, the two actors that play the two youngest, they I said this last oh week. My God. They're scene stealers. They, they steal everything. Yeah. Especially, I have to tell you, I hands down, my favorite moment of all the five episodes we've seen so far is officially the poker table and little Ian <laughs> and his silent scream. <laughs> oh my, we were, we were dying. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, that also that scene also brings up, uh, of course, my favorite character, Oh, Grandma, Grandma Huang. Huang. Yeah, well, uh, shout out to Grandma Huang. Grandma Huang, uh, I, I yeah. tweeted this during the show, but I said like, you know, a lesson for everyone is we never mess with a grandma, an yeah, Asian yeah. grandma in poker, and also in just generally all aspects of life. I have to say though, like, you know, in, in, in more in the files of like, this is my life, having your grandma or like an elder, Chinese elder, bond with you over gambling as a young child. <laughs> <laughs> That is the realness. That is the realness. I think some people were disappointed it wasn't Ma Jiang because that's what I learned when I was tiny. I'm like, oh, you like rolled up. Uh, eat, what you do is on this on the Ma Jiang table, you took you like rolled up on a corner, you, like just like posted up on a corner and just like observed. And they were so serious because it was real money, so you can't say shit. <laughs> or else they'll be like, oh, are you cheating for your dad? Like you know, it like, gets real. Oh snap! I never oh, even yeah. thought of that. Yeah, so yeah, I'm just saying, Grandma Wong gambling as like a way of bonding with the kids. Yeah. Also, just another scene stealer. Yeah. Another episode, another scene stealer. Oh my gosh, I'm uh, gonna check. I'm gonna check the hashtag. Let's see what's up. Um, let's see. But yeah, Grandma Wong, man, I, I was like, I was disappointed uh, though. It wasn't Ma Jiang. Uh, Rira, you on YouTube says that uh, Granny Huang's theme song should be Lady Gaga's Poker Face. <laughs> <laughs> if what's awesome is Grandma Wong, she don't give a fuck. She's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat these kids <laughs> in poker. <laughs> but, and then uh, let's see, Satori No Show says, "You know your '90s kids if you know what scrambled stations are." Right? That's, <laughs> you know <what> I'm saying? <laughs> For real, scrambled cable, yo. Um, can oh we talk God. about uh, Cattleman's Ranch Ranch's? Uh, oh yeah, uh, sexual Absurd. harassment. Oh yeah, training. <laughs> I know sexual harassment. Number one, Dusty Nugget, genius name. <laughs> Dusty, <laughs> Dusty Nugget. Dusty, Dusty Nugget. Nugget looks like the guy, the last person you would want leading any kind of sexual <laughs> harassment training at all. I know. Um, but also. Uh, wasn't it kind of perfect that he's just the kind of guy you would expect to also speak Mandarin? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that, Phil? I don't know. I just once that that layer of his character was revealed, I was just kind of like, I bet he's got like a jade necklace under that collar. <laughs> I bet if you go home, he's got scrolls up, uh, like unironic scrolls on his. 
you know, yes, that's and right. maybe like a ninja sword somewhere, like you know, hanging in the hallway. You like know the guy saying? went, the white guy that yeah. went on a date with. Yeah, and I was just like, oh man, it all comes together. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I feel like um, you know, coming from an Eddie Huang perspective, um, seeing the world as in in whiteness as weird. I feel like I could believe that this could be like a white fetish guy. <laughs> yeah. I could believe that they cast this guy to be like, yeah, he looks like he could have it. Asian fetish, I mean, um, <laughs> um, especially because one of the kids' name is Brock, which is so white. I was just like, <laughs> wait, is the white kid's name Brock? It's either gonna be Brock or Brad, so Brock yeah. or Br Brock, yeah. Brad or Chad. Or Chad, yeah. Brock, Brad. Brock, Brad, Chad. But but honestly, though, growing up in Torrance around a lot of Japanese Americans, I knew a lot of Brads and Chads. Oh, I'm just saying though, okay. Japanese Americans have their share yeah. of Brads and Chads. I don't know about Brock though. Um, you want to talk about Jessica Huang and her fear of all things? Oh of, yeah! Oh my gosh! It's Jessica kind of Huang. it's actually kind of interesting. Like she, you know, she says she saw everything on the nightly news, and that's it's all and it's all like oh that's kind of like that's the '90s, but it's all very um it takes me back to all that stuff where like um you know the equivalent now would be like these really uh scary like email forwards that your your grandma sends you about like you know like beware of like this scam these scammers are gonna get you at the ATM about this or that you know yeah and then uh. Her jumping to all those kind of, uh, you know, those fears, I think, were really. Uh, in the end, I think it's like, yeah, you really need more, you need more hobbies or something. Yeah, I mean, I feel like definitely like um, Jessica Wong's character took a backseat in this in this episode, right? Like yeah. everyone else were like getting like the the money the money jokes. That's true. Um, but uh, I feel like I feel like the '80s and the '90s was like a time when like, yeah, I feel like there's still fears now, right? There's still fears now, but like things would just be more intense back then. Like, I remember there was like this thing about white vans. Do you guys remember this? Like something about white vans and how like kids were getting snatched with white vans, <laughs> like windowless white vans. So like, I remember as a tiny kid being really afraid of white, white vans, vans because you're just told like, oh, you know, just stay away, yeah. Yeah, that's where they, they'll I, just grab you. It seemed like in the 80s, everybody was getting kidnapped. I mean, it's just like was every story, <laughs> like, I mean, it was just like a thing. Like, you're gonna, get, you're gonna be kidnapped, you know? Like, yeah. every story and every sitcom and drama was about a kid getting kidnapped. And so, yeah. I, I was always afraid of being kidnapped. Yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, uh, we definitely, I think we hit on all the points that some of you folks had talked about. Dusty Nuggets loves the Asian culture, Jean Kayon says. <laughs> Um, um, how about this one? Uh, Beverly Yanuaria uh, of Los Angeles says, Oh, yeah. Somebody want to fill me in on Black Spring Break? Why does that make me feel uncomfortable? She said. So, what was the reference to Black Spring Break? Because there was still, it was like the kids trying well, to like it, front it, like It's kind of a tag at the end where he was like, uh, I can tell you about Spring Break, Black, Black Spring, Spring Break. Break. I could like, that didn't get really a laugh here because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't understand the joke. I don't think we understood the joke. Does, if anyone on Twitter land or YouTube land, Okay, so there's different. So we have someone here. We have someone here. You said it's like Sam. what? Uh, there, was, there was a lot of like movies back in the nineties, like Bad Beach. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, it's so you're talking like a, it's like talking about a genre, genre of movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. oh. Black Spring Break though. Black Spring Break is an actual thing. But Black oh. Spring. Okay, here's the thing though. Like if I'm in college and there's like a, like there's a huge segment of like the black college experience. I'm assuming there might be Black Spring Break. Yeah. I'm just saying, yeah. but I'm just saying though, I'm sure it's a thing, right? We have to totally assume. I, we just don't know what the thing is. But I mean, it was played as a we joke, just, so I was like, was hey, yeah. I, was like, I, don't, I don't understand what that meant. We're like, oh, we're so ignorant so on clueless. this. <laughs> we're so ignorant on Black Spring Break. I apologize. <laughs> you know, we know there's Black Twitter, there's Asian American Twitter, there's, you know, but uh, Black Spring Break. So if you want to educate us, anyone on Black Spring Break, <laughs> use the hashtag fresh off the show. And um, you know, we know we we know you don't have to educate us, but those oh, who might. Okay, so dreaming through says putting razors in Halloween candy was big too. Oh, oh yeah, that was a thing, putting right? Putting razors in Halloween I don't know, candy. I don't know if it was an actual thing, but it was certainly a thing that everybody talked about it's happening, like, right? I just felt like it was like this amplified fear. It was yeah. like the white man's razors in Halloween candy. <laughs> I forgot what else it was. And uh, DJ Zob. Zobi says, needles in theater seats giving you AIDS was a <gasps> thing as well. Needles in theater seats giving you AIDS? I think that's, yeah. You have to like push the oh. chair down to make sure. You have to what? You have to like knock like, the chair down to make sure the needle wasn't in there. If it wasn't fall out, right? Oh my God. You have to <laughs> knock. Oh, so you have to like test the chair first and make sure, okay. Damn. 
or maybe needles because it was an AIDS. It was an AIDS scare, huh? Oh yeah, well like that needles, was that was needles when, yeah. in like the sandbox too. I just needles in general. I know. Like, like, that was always a thing, right? <laughs> okay. Do we have any comments on Black Twitter? Black Twitter about Black uh, Black Spring Break? Because <laughs> clearly Asian American Twitter is not going to tell us about Black Black Spring Break. Uh, do we have any questions or comments from the audience yeah, here? Yeah. How about that? Live yeah. audience. Live audience. There's like Anybody. 15 of you. Any, any? What else do you guys want to talk about? I feel like we covered some of the highlights for this episode. <laughs> These are, you fools are the loudest Asians I know. I don't know why you guys are not talking. Let's talk about sleepovers. I felt like I wasn't allowed to do sleepovers. Yes. Guys. Yeah. Really well, that was a big issue. That. Yes. Let's talk about the sleepovers. So, so um, my <laughs> My, for years, my sister never got to go to sleepover because yes. uh, Polly Class was kidnapped <gasps> in uh, in Petaluma, and that story was everywhere. And so, like, again, we're going back to the kidnap thing, but like, you know, getting uh, sleepovers was like just not a thing anybody no. was allowed to do. And also, just like, I think I don't know about you guys, but I think a general sense was like, that Asians weren't allowed to just sleep over in general, just because generally no sleeping over somebody's house was was it's not absurd. allowed it's just like i don't know i think the idea is that like someone else's house is their inner sanctum and it's really intimate yeah and who knows maybe some of it is also the fact that like if it's with someone who's not your background you're afraid of what their house is gonna be like right. yeah. and you know what i mean like yeah. but they had no problem um eddie had no problem hosting the kids at his own house so i think it's a matter of like you being allowed Going to go away. somewhere else's, yeah. yeah yeah you're like i don't trust that these other thing. people I, they, I feel like my parents were super like yeah. not cool with sleepovers you know no in middle school i had a i had to have a concerted campaign of persuasion with yeah. my parents about getting convincing them to for let me go to like an all girls sleepover where i didn't tell them that like you know they'd freeze our bras and like you know watch dirty play movies weird movies yeah <laughs> like or like talk about you know <laughs> I don't know, learn about sex from sexual each harassment other. Movies. I don't know. Oh, can we talk about just sexual harassment in the 90s? I oh. mean, that's when like that became like in the popular vernacular, you know. More so, right? Yeah. I mean, because of uh, the Nita Hill and Clarence Thomas, the, those confirmation hearings and yeah. um, all that stuff, it became like, you know, that's where you would hear about the nightly news. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, at first I was a little concerned when I was just like, oh no, Jessica Wong is like being really bad at her sexual harassment <laughs> seminar. <laughs> But I mean, which is, of course, it's played for the laugh. But then luckily, like, as far as the story goes, we see it in the audience that like, you know, she's messing up. Yeah. She's like harassing people while she's teaching about sexual harassment. Um, Don Lee, too, says the nightly, the nightly news continues to scare the crap out of my dad. I still get regular updates about diseases, homicides <laughs> from him. <laughs> That's true. If my parents watched American news, then. The thing, the thing with my parents is they watch Taiwan news. So when I actually visited Taiwan a few years ago, and it was like the first time as an adult where I was just like, I want to go out and hang out by myself. They literally listed all the different things that they heard was happening from the Taiwan news. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I've traveled in Japan, in New York, in South America by myself, and I'm like in Taiwan, and you're not letting me hang out because Very dangerous things. Yeah, they're like, oh, there's rapists and people who are gonna steal things. I'm like. Uh, oh, yeah. Joe has a comment here. Joe, say what you told us. Yeah. My my one Asian friend was only allowed to go to sleep, sleepovers because I was Asian. <gasps> so they're asleep over so at your like, house. She, she wasn't allowed to go to anybody else's house. She was allowed to go to my house. Oh. Asian friend sleepover. Asian friend sleepover. I feel like there is like this level of like mistrust or trust, whether it's like kind of prejudice or if it's just straight, straight up like, like, fearing like awkwardness because of different cultures. I know like when I went to my white friends <laughs> when I was little, I was blown away by how they li live differently. <laughs> like it was like a big thing. I was like, I felt like a total like, I was like, oh, you don't take your shoes off. You have unlimited sugary packaged snacks. <laughs> <laughs> this is incredible. Like they're like, they're just like, oh, you want Nutter Butters? You want Oreos? You want Capri Suns? You want like, I'm like, oh my God. Whose parents let you eat like this? How do you live like this? <laughs> uh, we got here, we got our, oh, our old pal, Ruel Gaviola. Yes, Ruel. Uh, he says, I still won't eat Pop Rocks and drink Coke at the same time. <laughs> So what was what was supposed to happen if you it explodes your head would explode no, in your oh in your, in your in your stomach what's that oh right right oh yeah Mikey from the old Life Cereal commercials apparently died because he because he consumed so pop rocks and coke and coke that was like a thing right yeah I think that's scientifically confirmed somewhere yeah oh my gosh someone uh, Beverly Anuaria says 90 scares remember Chupacabra 
chupacabra. What was it? I thought chupacabra. It's like a mythical like a, animal. I feel like that's a forever like Mexican. That's not myth. 90s. That's like forever. I know. That's a, and it's real. It's real. The chupacabra. Oh my gosh, this is cracking me up, man. It's like memory lane on the 90s. Like, what's your? Do you have a favorite scares. 90s reference in this show or? In, in this episode, or the Knock in the Boots music was oh was, snap! So what, who sang Knock in the Boots? H Town. H Town. Oh my gosh! Another great music cue. I mean, like you know, as soon as it come on, it's like <laughs> like I I'm, love I'm it. I'm gonna link this, but um, actually, uh, I'm friends with um, I guess I could call you a friend. I'm I'm, I'm friends with the guy who helped to edit the episodes for Fresh <sighs> Off the Boat, and he actually shared on his Facebook a Spotify playlist, a playlist? He put together. Oh shit! <laughs> of all of the all of the the fresh off the boat tracks that they use so That's far, awesome. So he, I guess he's adding to it as That's the episodes come so out. So cool. So I'll, I'll share that again. Knocking the boots. Knocking the boots. <laughs> good love and body. Oh, anyway. That was that was pretty sweet. So good. Um. So yeah. What else are we gonna talk about, you guys? Jaws, oh, we got, oh, Jaws, you have a Jaws. comment or question. Nice and loud. But Jessica would not apologize. I was cracking up. <laughs> oh, about oh that's right because okay so so at, toward the end of the episode um Jessica's trying to remind Lewis that like oh when you have the sex talk you need to talk about date rape <laughs> <laughs> so as a way of proving her point because Lewis forgot to talk about how date rape was bad she took a bunny and like attacked her son with it with it which is like going too far mom really <laughs> trigger warning um but yeah, so so um, Lewis was like trying to get Jessica to apologize, and is that a she thing? refused is, uh, to. Is that a thing, uh, Joss? Is that like a thing that you're? Uh... Uh, my parents did apologize, but it was it was like pulling teeth. It was, it was, it was something horribly, horribly bad to really apologize. Mommy and daddy I mean, are never. We had to apologize more than our parents had to apologize. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah, so definitely parents apologizing. That's like just me saying okay, like me, my mom bringing me like food. And me saying thank you, she'd be like, "Why are you saying thank you? This is what I do." Like that's like these kind of like etiquette that uh -huh. is like just polite. unspoken things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you just yeah. don't do it. It's like parents are like, "We don't, we don't need to apologize to you for shit." Yeah. We, we which she's like, she's like, "I gave birth to you. That counts for a thousand <laughs> apologies." That is <laughs> so lifetime, Chinese. Yeah. That is so Chinese. Like I was just telling someone the other day, like from when I was a kid, I was taught that for my birthday that American kids were totally wrong for celebrating it in such a grotesque way because as a, as a Chinese kid, when it's your birthday, it means that that was the day that your mom suffered a lot of pain. <laughs> <laughs> so in fact, you deserve to be hit on your birthday for the pain you caused your own mother. <laughs> This shit is real. So for the longest time, I heard that like if they wanted to, they could. They could sock me for every year that I was born. Damn. That I was, or it was my birthday. I know. Seventy-five is gonna suck. <laughs> <laughs> but they never did. Like but they worse. never did. Yeah. But it was definitely taught to me like, oh, yo, giving birth to you is like our biggest gift. So we don't gotta give you shit. Everything else is bonus. <laughs> So yeah, Jessica Wong, I ain't gotta, I ain't gotta apologize for nothing. Uh, my also, um, speaking of that scene where uh, she's sewing up that um, that bear or the bunny. I mean, yeah, yeah, like, I, up I the love bunny. the thing where uh, where Evan comes up and tries to take. He's like, no, Grandma won this fair and square. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> see, Jessica knows what's up. Those are rules are rules, man. Fair. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah, so we have a few minutes left. I'm just going to take a look at uh, what folks are saying. Definitely going to share the the Spotify. <gasps> yeah, then we're going to share the Spotify playlist, man. H-Town uh, knocking the boots is amazing. Grace Sue, at Grace Sue, of course, chiming in. Would My parents wouldn't let me sleep over at friends' houses either. Dude, that's like you miss out on so much coolness. Like, I kind of get like then the adolescent boy world of young Eddie Wong. Like, he's trying to like you know front like he has like a sex tape so that they could he could be cooler. I think the like the maybe the equivalent of like the like middle school girl era is straight up like going to the sleepover and like I don't know playing truth or dare, playing um what is it uh wow. light as a feather, stiff as a board. Getting your bra frozen because you're the first to fall asleep. These are like really American ass like traditions that like I would have missed out on if my parents if I didn't convince my parents to let me sleep over. When was your first sleepboard? Do you remember? Uh, probably like sixth grade, seventh sixth grade. grade. Yeah, okay. yeah. So. And that was that was exciting. 
Oh yeah. Cause you're like, <laughs> it's like late at night and you're like, Oh, it's nighttime hanging out, you know? And you're like uh, probably high off sugar, right? Cause you're probably eating just junk food. And then you're talking about whatever boys and shit. Oh, we have another comment here. Leanne. You want to talk about sex ed books? Oh, sex ed books. I think they're in school. Or in school? Oh yeah. Let's talk about, yeah. I mean, uh, so I, I got to, I guess to be honest, mom and dad have never had the sex talk with me <gasps> ever. Me neither. They never, they never did. Oh, they actually, did. just kidding. Just kidding. I don't know if this counts, okay? When I was like 21. <laughs> <laughs> I had a boyfriend that I never introduced as my boyfriend, and he, he had come over, and we were kind of messing around at my at parents' house. What? This was a year after I graduated from college. I was living at home, and my parents came home early, and they and they, they kind of almost walked in on us, <laughs> and and then like we just try to pretend that like he just left and stuff. My it was so embarrassing. My mom she actually went up to me like a, like later on that night, and she goes, um, you know, you shouldn't underestimate your mom because you know I've lived a life too, and you know if you want to ask me any questions, I was like no. <laughs> <laughs> no! I've lived a life too. I've lived a life. You don't know what stories unfold from that statement. <laughs> Mommy has lived a life too. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, no, I'm cool, mom. No, I'm cool. No, I'm, cool. No, I'm totally cool. No, what are you talking about? You should have let her talk. I want to hear what, she, what stories she could like. I don't understand Mommy what she was talking lived about. A life. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> I can't. I know. I'm going to need therapy after that. But the sex ed, I don't know. I saw, you know, everyone saw the the, the miracle of Yeah, well, I, I saw birth, hey, right? school took care of that, you know yeah, what I mean? Like school, it was, you know, it but my us. parents never had that talk with me, you no. know. They I, they just let school handle it, I guess. I like how I just said I was 21 and everyone cracked up. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz clearly that's the that's the actual appropriate age finally to have the sex talk. Well, you know, for Asian families, it's, you know, the, 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 the age limit is different. You well, know, because so. it's like, don't have sex, don't have sex. And then when you're 21, when are you going to get married? Yeah. When you have kids, <laughs> when you get married, you know? On a dime, right? We're just, this is how we're going to do it in America, on a dime. Oh, my but goodness. If you're, if you're a daughter, like my sister and I, my, my parents don't have any sons. I remember my dad telling my sister and I in high school, say, you know, if I had sons, they wouldn't get pregnant. <laughs> what does that even mean? Like him hinting that don't get pregnant because you would actually have to claim it because they would know. Oh, would geez. Carry it to That's true. I was like, this is a mess up. Women, women have evidence, <laughs> visible evidence sometimes that we are sexually active. <laughs> That's, all we got. That's all we got. That's all we got. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so that was Naomi, Naomi Co. All right. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to be a Oh, my bad. Um, all right. So we got a couple, just a couple more minutes left. Uh, I'm just checking. I'm just checking yeah. some final thoughts here. So while you check, let me just give, make sure we give our shout outs to the right people. Uh, shout out to our, um, our friends at ABC who hooked us up with this fresh off the boat poster. Look at that. Randall oh. conscious is like, yeah. yeah, set decor. Our, our set is starting to look less jank and you know, a little <laughs> bit like, like a real thing. Um, we got a, we got a shout out, shout out to our, uh, our friends at visual communications who helped us produce this downtown LA. Um, visual communications. If you're in LA, they present the Los Angeles Asian Pacific film festival, and that's happening this year in April. So check out vconline.org and uh, check out this fun stuff. If you're interested in seeing more people, more Asians on screen telling their stories, uh, the film festival is definitely for you. Um, anything, what else we got? Any other? Our producer, shout Joanna. Out to our, shout out to uh, Joanna or on the uh, on the headphones. Yeah. Shout out to Milton Liu of VC helping us out always. Shout out to the 55 viewers who are watching. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All 55 of you, 54. I know. Oh, folks are dropping uh, out okay. already. Okay, that's Damn. cool. That's cool, you know. So let's continue the conversation on uh, Fresh Off the Show. Um, I'm going to actually, we're going to spend some time after the show to reply to tweets and stuff. So if you guys have more comments, we could probably uh, carry over some of this conversation to next week when we, uh, same bat time, same bat channel. Yep, we'll do it again. 8 p.m. Right for the up, show. Yeah. And then our post show. At 8.35. 8 
Pacific Standard Time. We'll see you then. And thank you for joining us. And thanks to our studio audience here. Woo! Thanks, guys. Peace. Bye.